Tom Hartman here on the news. You need to know this. President Obama is summoning congressional leaders to the White House today for another round of debt limit negotiations, and he's advised Republicans to check their ultimatums at the door. The president is trying to pitch a $4 trillion deficit reduction package over the next 10 years that slashes away at programs mostly affecting the working class and even cuts up the social safety net in America, hacking $400 billion out of Medicare and Medicaid. All these tough cuts will be in exchange for closing a few small tax loopholes for corporations, billionaires, and billionaires. Ultimately, President Obama's dealing, deal is heavy on spending cuts, light on tax hikes. But don't expect Republicans to like the deal. They'd rather crash the American economy than see tax rates for their millionaire and billionaire campaign donors go up a measly 3% to where they were under Bill Clinton when we had a budget surplus and created 23 million American jobs. Right now, government revenue in America is at a 60-year low, and Republicans are refusing to acknowledge that our government is going broke because of three decades of Reagan's Starve the Beast economics and an army of corporate lobbyists who have blown holes in the tax code. We don't have a spending problem in America. We have a, an income problem, a revenue problem, and a debt limit deal needs to focus on that reality. Roll back the Reagan tax cuts and make billionaires and hedge fund managers on Wall Street who pay less in taxes than their janitors cough up their fair share like the rest of us. That's what shared sacrifice looks like. Workers in Wisconsin are screwed. What else is new? Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker is transforming his the, the workforce in his state, not only to Walker bust up public unions, but also he took away their, away their power to declare certain jobs around the state as union-only work, meaning the state can now bring in private employees willing to work for less and lower benefits, creating a race to the bottom in the labor force in that state. And Walker has already hit rock bottom in that race. Since Walker's new law went into effect, Racine County in Wisconsin has called up prison inmates who work for no money and no benefits to do work that unions used to do, like landscaping and maintenance around the county. I guess this is Walker's idea of deficit reduction, employing free prison slave labor. Let's hope congressional Republicans don't get any ideas from their hero in Wisconsin and mandate enforcement of jaywalking laws to get more prisoners to work for free and further wipe out union workers. In the best of the rest of the news, the National Bureau of Economic Research has released a report that shows just how important Medicaid is to the well-being of our nation. The study found that individuals on Medicaid were 35% more likely to see a doctor, 15% more likely to have access to prescription drugs when they needed them. Also, Medicaid recipients were 30% more likely to be admitted into a hospital, and women on Medicaid were 60% more likely to seek pre preventative care like mammograms. With better access to the health care system thanks to Medicaid, the individuals were 25% more likely to say their health was excellent. Despite all that, though, Republicans in Congress, as well as Republican governors around this country, are trying to dismantle Medicaid. The idea that a government program is actually improving the lives of millions makes them sick. Is wealth inequality in America hurtling our nation towards civil unrest? In a television interview this morning, former National Security Advisor Zbigniew Brzezinski warned that the growing wealth imbalance in America, now reaching levels not seen since the Great Depression, could lead to civil unrest in the streets. As the middle class in America falls deeper and deeper into desperation, Brzezinski said, we're going to slide into intensified social conflicts, social hostility, some forms of radicalism. There is just going to be a sense that this is not a just society. We, in fact, actually have a society in which 400 people own more wealth than 150 million other Americans. We have a society in which 50% of all the children in America will depend on food stamps at some point in their life before they're 18. And among African-American children, that number is 90%. We no longer live in a just society. And if Brzezinski is right, turbulent times could be ahead for America. No more rewards for bad bankster behavior. Federal regulators at the FDIC approved a new plan yesterday that holds Wall Street CEOs accountable if they run their banks into the ground. Under the new authority given to the FDIC, federal regulators can take back those fat paychecks that were given to CEOs in the event that their bank collapses and needs to be liquidated. Back in 2008, we saw over and over again corporate executives running from the wreckage of their failing banks with their pockets filled to the brim with bonus cash. But this new policy by the FDIC ensures that the executives who screwed their corporations and their shareholders with risky gambling now have to go down with the ship. Is Rupert Murdoch's media empire crumbling? As a phone hacking scandal that British Prime Minister David Cameron described as absolutely disgusting threatens to take down Murdoch's News of the World tabloid in the UK, 
News Corp's shares are plummeting, and British lawmakers are calling for a crackdown on Murdoch's many media holdings in their country. The turmoil overseas, Murdoch is focusing on his detractors here in the United States, namely MediaMatters.org, the nonprofit media watchdog. Over the last 10 days, Murdoch's Fox so called news has run over 30 segments attacking Media Matters and is mobilizing viewers to flood the IRS with petitions to strip Media Matters of their nonprofit tax exempt status. The British have had enough with Murdoch's perversion of the media, and sensing the United States might be turning on him too, Murdoch is going after the truth tellers like Media Matters. I sense desperation. And that's the way it is today, Thursday, July 7th, 2011. I'm Tom Hartman on the news.